Okay, very good morning to all. Uh, <clears throat> today we're going to start our class number 26. And uh, we're going to start uh, course convection or actually fundamental of convective heat transfer. And we're going to talk about a lot of uh, other different things, mainly, uh, mainly we're going to con talk on force convection and the effect of various dimensionless number like Reynolds number, Prandtl numbers, Nussel numbers, and their <coughs> role uh, during heat transfer, heat and momentum transfer. Also, we're going to talk about uh, turbulent flow and then Reynolds Colburn analogy. So that this is a uh, the, the the today's talk actually going to uh, deal with uh, various things. So have some patience. Uh, let us first uh, examine what are the objective of this uh, class. Actually, <clears throat> we're going to mainly deal with the physical mechanism of convection in uh, and its classification, like mainly like free convection and force convection. There are two different types of convection. And also going to develop uh, and visualize various uh, velocity and thermal boundary layer. I think uh, during fluid flow, we already talked about uh, what is boundary layer, what is thermal boundary layer, how the characteristic length is being determined, how to determine the boundary layer thickness. So actually, that uh, aspect is also applicable in uh, fluid in heat transfer because during force convection, always some fluid is being already involved. So the fluid flow and heat transfer ha happens uh, together. That's why the the, I mean, uh, and also going to know, gain a knowledge about uh, various uh, dimensionless number, as I mentioned, Reynolds, Prandtl, and Nussel number. We're going to distinguish between the laminar and turbulent flow through a pipe and tube, uh, and then understand the mechanism of momentum and heat transfer. We are going to derive uh, many as various differential equation, uh, but again, uh, derivation is uh, very cumbersome. So we are going to just uh, go through it very quickly. Uh, if you need to uh, derive this expression, you can do it later. In order to uh, save some time, we'll uh, just uh, go through the derivation and then you can do it, you practice it when you have free time. And then uh, non-dimensionalist convection equation and obtain uh, reynolds colburn analogy, you're going to show for heat and momentum transfer, how this has been developed. And then uh, finally, you're going to use this analogy between momentum and heat transfer and determine heat transfer coefficient, the coefficient that is the skin for uh, <clears throat> turbulent flow through a tube. So this is going to be a, a, a lengthy talk. Uh, <clears throat> just uh, go through these slides uh, when I, after I'm done and again and gain knowledge about it. So <clears throat> first, first and foremost thing, what is convection? I think uh, all of you know what is conduction is. Conduction actually heat flow through the solid, right? But in case of convection, it involves some fluid motion, right? Heat transfer through the solid is always conduction, as I mentioned, but heat transfer through a fluid is by convection in presence of a bulk fluid motion, right? So if the fluid is in stationary condition or in the coercion condition, we can consider it's a limiting case of convection. Actually, that will be a conduction, right? So therefore, conduction is a fluid can be viewed as a limiting case of convection. It corresponds to the coercion fluid. As you can see, this is a forced convection. The surface is at... Uh, C and then air is flowing right by a blower or a fan. So they are actually passing this air through the surface, so it's a force convection. Natural convection that happens due to buoyancy effect or any other means like hot water gets warm water gets uh, uh, travels to the top and then cold water fills the empty spaces. That is happens during summer or any other time. So that is called natural convection, right? And then finally there is no convection, that is the limiting case. So actually it is going to consider conduction. So yeah, we have, we have, now we have seen uh, that uh, fluid motion is very much essential. So uh, fluid motion actually what happens, it enhances the heat transfer and it brings the warmer and cooler chunk of fluid into the contact, just I mentioned, right? And initiating higher rate of conduction at a greater min, min number of sites. The rate of heat transfer through a fluid is much higher by convection than in conduction. So that's why convective heat, convection heat transfer is uh, it's much more realistic and much more prominent in reality. And all for all engineering cases or practical problems, uh, convection is the dominant uh, uh, heat transfer mechanisms okay, instead of conductions. And the higher the fluid velocity, the higher the rate of heat transfer. As you can see, so through a fluid sandwich between two parallel plates, you can see there's a hot plate and a cold plate, and heat is being transferred. Right? There is and also this heat exchanger and all other applications, this convection actually plays a dominant role. That will come later. Now, uh, most important, uh, what are the equations? The basic fundamental equation for convection heat transfer uh, is depends on the fluid property, mainly the dynamic viscosity, thermal 
conductivity density and specific heat also it depends on the geometry and the roughness of the solid as you can see the newton's law of cooling actually you can cooling or heating actually it says newtonian cooling or heating the <coughs> convective heat transfer coefficient is given by h ts minus t infinity here h is the convection heat transfer coefficient ts is the temperature of the surface and t infinity is the temperature of the fluid sufficiently away from the surface h is given by uh, as i said convection heat transfer coefficient and as is the heat transfer surface, heat transfer surface area so actually if you multiply this uh, you divide uh, total heat loss by a uh, surface uh, area you get the heat flask right that is uh, q dot convection now convection heat transfer coefficient the uh, rate of heat transfer between a solid surface and a fluid per unit surface area per unit time distance the heat transfer coefficient it is given rate of heat transfer between a solid surface and a fluid per unit surface area per unit temperature difference that's why it is unit is watt per meter square c that is the what is the amount of heat being transferred per meter square per area per unit surface area per degree per unit temperature difference okay that is the unit watt per meter square c let us look into that uh, what happens when a fluid uh, flows through a uh, flat plate okay or as you can see uh, the fluid is approaching at a constant velocity v so the moment it uh, come in contact with the fluid plate there is a no slip condition develops okay so what is the no slip condition a, when a fluid comes in contact with the surface the the fluid gets stick to the surface right there is no viscous due to the viscous effect and there is hardly any movement of the fluid right but as the as you move away from the sur uh, surface in the y direction this is the fluid path of fluid motion and this is the vertical direction as you can see i think i already discussed the fluid velocity keep on increasing and then a point is reached where it is reaches the free stream velocity this is the free stream velocity so that is called boundary layer thickness i think i have already mentioned right so there actually if you can see this is the percent of the free stream velocity it achieved this is known as boundary layer thickness which is given by delta i will come to that later in the slides but you remember this this is this is the this happens due to the viscosity effect a no slip condition develops so let us uh, look into the the equations which are going to be uh, applicable for no slip condition and at a solid surface uh, as you as the as you said in this uh, last slide no slip condition heat transfer from the solid to the fluid layer adjacent to the surface is by pure conduction why because the fluid has become quiescent or stationary right the fluid flow has become quiescent and stationary as i mentioned in the previous slide the moment fluid become uh, quiescent or stationary it can be uh, considered fluid layer is motionless and then it can be expressed as a just simple equation of conduction right so the conductive heat transfer equation will be minus k del t by del y in the y in the y direction because fluid motion is constant in this y direction right so that is actually given by minus k is the thermal conductivity or fluid conductivity and that is del t by del y is the thermal gradient in the y direction now this heat fluid flow in the uh, y direction will be equal to the convective heat transfer loss okay so these two can be equal conduction convection and convective heat transfer and conductive heat transfer now in order to determine the convective heat transfer equation we have already seen what is the equation for convective heat transfer equation that is h into t a t s minus t infinity q a q convective is h t s minus t infinity so if you write this expression h become minus k free del t y del y y y at zero and t s minus t infinity the convective heat transfer equation you can solve this equation with proper boundary condition and then get it but in reality about a mean convective heat transfer equation for a surface is determined because as you move away from the surface the convective heat transfer equation keep on increasing because the fluid become more the fluid flow become more dominant so what you have to do you have to determine local convective heat transfer equation that is being de determined by integrating the equation over the whole surface or over the whole length so how do you determine the local heat transfer equation that is actually you uh, integrate over the entire surface area the local heat transfer equation or you determine by the length of l right 1 over l 0 to the l hx dx right that's how you determine it then we are going to derive we are going to uh, <coughs> revise uh, basic uh, we are going to revise this uh, fundamental concept which we have already discussed uh, during our talk in fluid flow but again uh, fluid flow and uh, i mean in during convection heat transfer fluid flow actually dominant factor all the uh, concept which we do, which we actually discussed is applicable i think you all know what is viscous flow is uh, when uh, flow in with frictional effect are dominant and implicit flow when flow in uh, there is no viscosity effect right the viscous force are actually negligible i think already you have 
I have discussed, you can go through this slide. But uh, what is natural and force flow? I think the natural uh, convection and force convection, you all know. When a force flow or force convection happen, a fluid is forced by, uh, fluid flow uh, forced to a surface, right? By some means, external means, such as by pumps, blower, or fan. When fluid motion is due to natural means, such as buoyancy effect, as I said, warm fluid travels to the top and then cold fluids fill up that empty space, which manifests itself as the natural convection. So this is just for the fundamental concept, understanding. Now uh, we are going to discuss, uh, this is also we discussed in our previous slides, uh, one, two, and three dimensional uh, flow. Actually, uh, as you can see here, uh, <clears throat> this is fluid flow through a uh, pipe, circular pipe. The moment it fluid flow, a fluid enters uh, at the at the channel, the velocity profile is given by two dimensional, right? Because the fluid velocity is constant, and then in the y direction also, in this direction also, fluid velocity is changing, right? But when the fluid becomes fully developed flow here, it becomes one dimensional downstream, and it's even unchanged, and the velocity becomes function of radius, right? So this is actually uh, different types of dim different dimensional flow. This is Initially, it is two-dimensional flow becomes one-dimensional flow, and uh, one, two, and three-dimensional flow. Uh, uh, it depends on uh, <clears throat> the velocity profile uh, is varying in how many direction. Right? If it is in varying in one direction, it is called one-dimensional flow. If it is varying in two and three-dimensional, it's called two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Okay, this is also you are, I think you are already aware of it. So I'll move to the next slide. This is. Uh, also, we discussed, and I just mentioned the boundary layer thickness. As I, as you can see, that uh, the due to no slip condition, the velocity is zero at the surface, the flat plate. Away from the surface in y direction, velocity keep on gradually is increasing, and then it reaches 99% of the free stream velocity. That is called boundary layer thickness. This line, is the boundary layer thickness, and then as you can see, boundary layer thickness is not constant. This keep on increasing, right? Boundary layer thickness is higher compared to this region, right? It's typically defined as the distance y from the surface at which velocity becomes 99% of the free stream velocity, right? This capital B is free stream velocity, and this is the velocity varying in the y direction. The hypothetical line of u 0.990 divides the flow over a flat plate into two regions. So this hypothetical line divide, derives the flow into region. I have highlighted, underlined it. One is boundary layer region, the viscous effect, and the velocity change are significant. That is below this line, right? Where is the boundary layer region? And then another is irrotational flow region. The frictional effect are negligible and the velocity remain essentially constant. That is above this line, right? That is called velocity boundary layer. Then another concept is the thermal boundary layer. A thermal boundary layer develops when a fluid at a specified temperature flows over a surface that is at a different temperature. So here actually the concept is a little different. Here at the fluid at a specified temperature, Flowing over a surface that is a different temperature. So actually, the uh, at a specified temperature here, it can easy, we can uh, consider it's the uh, the uh, specified temperature is T infinity and the surface temperature, as you can see, T S. It is changing. So the T S changing. So bound thermal boundary layer also changing, just like fluid boundary layer. This is called thermal boundary layer. This is free stream velocity. Okay. The thermal boundary layer on a flat plate shown in the figure. Thermal boundary layer, the flow region over the surface in which the temperature variation in the direction normal to the surface is significant. So this is where the fluid uh, is flowing. And this is the normal to the surface. The thermal boundary layer actually becomes dominant, or actually thermal boundary layer varies in the y direction, the normal direction. And the thickness of the thermal boundary layer, just like the fluid boundary layer, delta T, at any location along the surface is defined as the Distance from the surface that is the temperature difference that is T minus Ts. T is the temperature and Ts is the surface temperature. T minus Ts equal to 99 percent, 0 0.99 or T infinity minus Ts. That's what I say, the free stream temperature, right? And the thickness of the thermal boundary layer increases in the flow direction just like fluid boundary layer. So the concept is identical like fluid boundary layer and thermal boundary layer. Only the parameters here actually are measuring parameter instead of velocity here measuring the temperature. Okay. I think you got it. Now, uh, <clears throat> another uh, concept which uh, also we dealt with is called wall shear stress. Uh, shear stress, as you all know, is frictional force per unit area. The shear stress for most fluid is proportional to the velocity gradient. 
and the shear stress of the wall is expressed by this equation tau w mu d del u by del y y is equal to zero where tau w is called wall shear stress mu is viscosity or dynamic viscosity which is having a unit of newton second per meter square or pascal second right this expression also you know when fluid flow through a laminar fluid flow through a, 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 a circular tube when you derive the <coughs> hagen possible equations you have seen these expressions now most important thing uh, from your <coughs> background you know what is newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluids are we are going to consider mainly newtonian fluid because non newtonian fluid concept becomes uh, complex so newtonian fluid means that uh, linear relationship between the stress fluid uh, stress and strain and if it is non linear then it's the fluid uh, shear stress and shear stress are having an <coughs> index right that is like dilatant or pseudo plastic fluids which are actually known as non newtonian fluids Although all of you know that mu by rho having a unit of strokes on meter square per second, and uh, I think this is just to refresh your memory. Uh, and then one another important, very important parameter is that uh, shear stress, the wall shear stress is equal is related to this expression, CF rho v square by two, where CF is known as friction coefficient or skin friction coefficient. We'll see this expression later in the later part in this presentation, where it becomes very <coughs> useful terminology. And frictional force on the entire surface given by wall shear stress times area. So it is actually you multiply this by the area, right? Now frictional coefficient is an important parameter in heat transfer study because it directly related to the heat transfer coefficient and the power requirement for a pump or fan. So I will see this that how this CF, that frictional coefficient or skin friction coefficient, is actually becomes dominant. CF rho is equal to okay. So I think uh, this is a table given for various dynamic viscosity. As you can see, viscosity keep on uh, glycerin oils. Viscosity is higher compared to the water and gasoline, ammonia, all this liquid. Right? Viscosity increases. I think. Now uh, comes to the more important uh, <coughs> concept. I think, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to determine uh, dimensionless numbers. Or non 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 dimensionalized or convection heat transfer in convective study, it is a common practice to non dimensionalize the governing equation and combine the variable. We will see this as we move forward, which together into dimensional number. So first is Nusselt number. Nusselt number is actually given by the represent the enhancement of heat transfer through a fluid layer as a result of convection fluid convection related to the conduction. So actually you can see equation is H L C by K or actually. It has been very easily determined. You know, convective heat transfer is H del T and conduction is K del T by A. So that is the ratio of convective heat transfer to the conduction heat transfer. H L C by K that is called Nusselt number. Heat transfer a fluid uh, layer of thickness L and temperature different del T. The most important, larger the Nusselt number, the more effective the convection because as you can see, Nusselt number is nothing but ratio of convective heat transfer to conductive heat transfer. Obviously, the larger the Nusselt number, it, convective heat transfer, convection heat transfer become dominant. At Nusselt number one, the fluid layer represents heat transfer across the layer by pure conduction because now the denominator becomes dominant. It can be this one. Okay. We will also see that uh, Nusselt number is the ratio of heat flow rate by convection heat process under a unit temperature gradient to the heat flow rate by conduction. As I mentioned, through a stationary thickness of L meters, so actually you get conduct convection by conduction H K by L H L by K. It is also the ratio of heat transfer rate Q to the rate of which heat would be conducted within the fluid under a temperature gradient del theta by L. Again, H L C by K. It can be also represented by characteristic length L to the thickness del X of a stationary fluid layer conducting the heat at the same rate under the same temperature difference. So, Q is the conductive heat transfer, which is given K del T by del X, which is equal to the H del T. Right? If you are conducting, this is del T is the temperature difference. So, del X will become if you recall, this del x will become k by h. We all the time will get answer. So Nusselt number, as I mentioned, is the ratio of characteristic length to the thickness l by del x. Now del x is k by h, so actually become h l by k. Okay. So these are actually you can be represented by various means, but ultimately the Nusselt number is h l c by k, where l is the characteristic length. Nusselt number is the convenient measure of the convective equation. For a given value of the Nusselt number, the convective heat transfer equation is directly proportional to the thermal conductivity because if you know the Nusselt number, so, so H becomes proportional to the K, right? 
complete trial question is directly proportional to the sum of conductivity of the fluid and inversely proportional to the significant length, that is the characteristic length. Okay. Let's look into the other <coughs> parameter that is called Prandtl number. Prandtl number is the relative thickness of velocity and the thermal boundary layer. So actually, it is the thermal diffusivity ratio of kinematic viscosity thermal diffusivity, right? Kinematic viscosity is the mu mu nu and uh, alpha is uh, thermal diffusivity. It's also been it's also been uh, expressed as molecular diffusivity of momentum divided by molecular diffusivity of heat. Mu C P by K. Always remember, Prandtl number is mu C P by K. Prandtl number of generally gases are about one, and because it, it indicates that both momentum and heat dissipates through the fluid at about the same time. Because if it is one, so you can see that heat dissipates through the fluid by momentum and as well as by uh, molecular diffusivity become equal. And uh, heat diffuses very quickly in liquid metal, so Prandtl number is less than one. So that means that uh, by uh, moment molecular diffusion that is through uh, thermal diffusion uh, instead of thermal diffusion molecular diffusion is dominant in case of uh, liquid the denominator is higher and the numerator is less right and very slowly in oil so oil is uh, whereas oil it is random number greater than one right <coughs> consequently the thermal boundary layer is much thicker for liquid metal and much thinner for oil relative to the velocity boundary layer. so that what does that mean because for the liquid Thermal boundary layer is thicker, whereas for oil, thermal boundary layer is thinner. That's why it is less than one and greater than one. As you can see, Prandtl number is given for various numbers. Oil, you can see, is higher. Which are it. Uh, liquid, metal, gas, water, it is very low. Hmm. As I said, uh, you see ratio of kinematic viscosity by thermal diffusivity. You can see thermal diffusivity is alpha, kinematic viscosity is new. Alpha can be retained by K by rho CP. So, rho CP goes up, so it become uh, now. <coughs> Mu into rho actually is become uh, rho into mu actually mu, so that's why it's become mu C by K. Kinematic viscosity indicates the impulse transport through molecular friction, that is molecular diffusivity, as I just mentioned, molecular diffusivity of momentum, whereas thermal diffusivity indicates the heat energy transport by conduction. Prandtl's number it provides a measure of relative effectiveness of momentum and heat energy transport by diffusion, and it is a connective link between the velocity field and temperature field. And if it is having its value, actually influence the relative growth of velocity and thermal boundary, as I just mentioned. Right. Next is Reynolds number. I think uh, I don't need any explanation for Reynolds number. You already have seen many times. It is the ratio of inertial force to viscous force given by dv rho by mu. Huh? At large Reynolds number, the inertial force uh, are dominant, right? Proportional to the fluid density and the square of the fluid velocity yet when given. A larger relative to the viscous force, right? And thus the viscous force cannot prevent a random and rapid fluctuation, and the fluid is be, fluid is given <coughs> signifies turbulent flow. Whereas a small and you know, small moderate Reynolds number, the viscous force are large enough to suppress the fluctuation, and this become the fluid remains laminar. Right? The same thing has been written here also. It is defined as the ratio of inertial force to viscous force. You know, random number signifies the relative predominance of the inertial to the viscous force occurring in the flow system. The higher the value of Reynolds number, the greater will be the relative contribution of inertial effect. And the smaller the value, the greater will be the effect of viscous effect. Right? Next is Stanton number. This is uh, it's a ratio. Uh, it's a Stanton number actually uh, can be given by Nusselt number divided by Reynolds number and times Prandtl's number. Right? But it is actually ratio of heat transfer coefficient to the flow of heat per unit temperature rise due to the velocity of the fluid. So it is heat transfer coefficient, convective heat transfer coefficient given by H divided by rho U C P, which can be written by in this form. And you can see it is become national number divided by Reynolds number and Tandel number. Standard number, uh, it is worth noting the standard number used only on the correlation of force convection because fluid velocity here actually uh, is been used. So it is already the standard number is already all, is mainly used in Force convection, and we will see the effect of standard number when we do the Reynolds Coleman analogy in the later later half of this presentation. How it is effective, right? Remember this standard number is Nusselt number divided by Reynolds number and Prandtl number, and it is the ratio of heat transfer coefficient to the flow of heat per unit temperature rise due to the velocity of the fluid. Peclet number, 
uh, it is the ratio of mass uh, heat flow while by convection to the flow rate by conduction under a unit temperature gradient and through a thickness L. So, as you can see, this is the convection heat transfer equation given by rho U C P. And for a unit temperature uh, gradient, unit to a thickness L, it is conductor heat transfer given by K. So, particularly now, what is convective heat transfer divided by uh, conduction heat transfer? It's become L U by alpha. All the parameters get changed. Particular number also can be written Reynolds number times Pendle number. It's become L U by alpha. It's multiplication of Pendle's number times Reynolds number. Uh, then uh, Gratz number is there. It is the only related only for the heat flow to the fluid flowing through circular pipe. If it is through circular pipe, then Gratz number become dominant. It is defined as the ratio of heat capacity of fluid flowing through the pipe or unit length of the pipe to the conductivity of the pipe. So the heat capacity is given by MCP and then per unit length that is L divided by thermal conductivity K. So it is given MCP by LK. And then they have rearranged this time, and as we've been shown that it is Gratz number is can be written pi by four Reynolds number panel number d by l. Or d by l are the diameter and length of the pipe. Pi by four is constant. So you can say Gratz number is a multiplication of Reynolds number panel number times the diameter and length. Right. It also can be written in this form MCP by LK, and then you have rearranged, and it will be written pectret number in times pi d by. Four. Some product is merely pectret number. You can remember this one, panel number, gas number, Reynolds number, panel number, times d by L. Okay. The last one, Grashoff number. Grashoff number is related to natural convection. It is not related to coarse convection. And it is defined as the ratio of product of inertial force and buoyancy force divided by square of the viscous force. And Grashoff number is given by this expression, rho square beta g delta L cube by mu square. Grashoff number has a role in free convection, similar to the played by Reynolds number in force convection. Free convection is usually suppressed at sufficiently small Grashoff number, begin at some critical value of Grashoff number, depending upon the arrangement, and then becomes more and more effective with increasing Grashoff number. So now uh, we are going to uh, derive some expressions, but again, uh, we just need to uh, look at the final expression because derivation is very cumbersome. The first thing we are going to determine the local and average heat transfer coefficient for a <coughs> fluid flow through a flat plate. As you can see here, fluid is flowing through a flat plate, and this is that this is the line which demarcate between the boundary region and the rotational region, or actually it's the boundary layer, right? The free stream velocity is given by capital U. As you can see, it has been represented here. So we have already seen that uh, the heat flow, the heat flux can be given by this expression, right? We already have seen. Uh, Q by A is equal to Hx, Ts minus T infinity is equal to minus K, del T by del Y, by zero, because due to the no slip condition, Fluid velocity is zero here, but actually it is keep on increasing as it move upwards. Right? Now, how to solve these expressions? Del T by del Y, uh, people have shown that it's a surface temperature gradient can be given by this expression. Square root of uh, U by Vx times del theta by del Y, eta zero. Uh, actually, it's a, <coughs> this, this terminology, you just need to remember, don't need to, I mean, just look into this expression. And uh, this del, del theta by del y eta zero can be given by this expression 0 0.32 Pendle's number one by three. So finally, this expression becomes this minus 0 0.32 x divided by x times T s minus T infinity times Reynolds number half because square root of u by v is a Reynolds number and then Pendle's number one by three. So this del t by del y y zero is this. So This and national number we have already seen hx x by k. So if you take this k x and k from the right hand side and multiply, this is become national number. So this is the expression national number 0 0.32 Reynolds number to the power half, Pandor's number to the power 1 by 3. Where hx is called the local convective transfer equation, and nx called is the local value of national number 
at a distance x from the leading edge of the plane. So this is leading edge, distance x, this is called Nusselt number. How do you determine now average heat transfer coefficient? Because HS is a local heat convective heat transfer coefficient. As I said before also, either I have to integrate over the whole surface area or over the whole length. We are actually integrating over the whole length. Average by over the whole Go to integration zero to L HHTF. HX we have determined this expression. We put it here and then we integrate over the whole length and then again we take the Reynolds number UIV. So finally you get average heat transfer, uh, average convective heat transfer equation 0 0.664 K by L, Reynolds number to the power half, your Pandel's number 1 by 3. What do you see if you compare this expression and this expression that H H bar and HX that actually H bar is 2 HX, right? And the average and Nusselt number also given by h bar by l by s 0 0.664 Reynolds number half your Pandel's number only. This expression is only valid if Pandel's number greater than 0 0.3. So this expression is useful for uh, solving equation average uh, heat transfer equation or average Nusselt number. Okay, this you can remember just this one Nusselt number 0 0.664 Reynolds number to the power half Pandel's number to the power one by s. This is good enough. Okay. So let's look into one example. Air at uh, air at atmospheric pressure at and 40 degrees C flows with a velocity, uh, average velocity, at least uh, five meter per second over a long flash plate. This is temperature of C. Very good. To determine the average heat transfer coefficient over the two meter length of the plate, average heat transfer coefficient that is h bar h. Also find out the rate of heat transfer between the plate and the air per one meter width of the plate. Air at one at, uh, atmospheric pressure and ATC given, uh, kin the kinematic viscosity is given uh, 2.107 into 10 to the power minus 5 meters square per second. K given thermal conductivity and Pandel's number given, right? Now T infinity is given 40 degrees C, right? That is infinite band. Then velocity given, L given, surface temperature given 1 into 20 C. Length of breadth of the tube is given one meter. Now you have to determine the bulk temperature, the property at mean bulk temperature given by the average arithmetic mean, that is the Ts plus T infinity by two, that is ATC. And the ATC properties are given kinetic viscosity, thermal conductive, Pandel number. First, you have to determine the average convective heat transfer equation. So in order to do that, you calculate Reynolds number, that is U L by nu. You know L no, so you can calculate 4.746 and divide by. Of course, this is actually laminar flow, so you can use this expression. This is actually happen. This expression only happen if you laminar flow. Okay. So this expression, Nusselt number 0 0.664, Reynolds number to the power half, Pandel's number 1 by 3. Reynolds number, you put this value. Reynolds number, you already calculated, Pandel number given. So you solve for average heat transfer equation, you get 6.133 watt per meter, meter square Kelvin. Rate of heat transfer is Q. Average heat transfer coefficient surface area Ts minus T infinity, it is totally 981.281. Okay, so as simple as that. We are going to look into another example. In a certain uh, in a certain glass making process, a square plate of glass, one meter square area, and three millimeter thick heated uniformly to 90 degrees C is cooled by air at 20 degrees C flowing over both sides parallel to the plate at 2 meter per second. Calculate the initial rate of cooling cooling the plate, neglect temperature gradient in the glass plate and consider only force convection. For the glass given density given, specific heat given and other property density, specific heat, thermal conductivity. These are for the property of the air density. So area given initial temperature, surface temperature 90 C and further away from the surface, the infinity temperature given 20 degrees C. Velocity given 2 meter per second. Right? This is the plate. Right? Square plate of 1 meter square area and 3 millimeter stick. Right? This is given. So initial rate of cooling, you have to determine that uh, Nusselt number is this expression. And first you calculate, so this is only valid for Pandel number greater than 0 0.5. So Pandel number, we have to first calculate Pandel number. It is Reynolds number you calculate this much 1.087 10 to the power 5. And Pandel number you calculate 0 0.5. Right, and so we get uh, H prime that is the Nusel number, average Nusel number, the average heat convective heat transfer coefficient 194.19. This is 
this expression. So h h prime will be 5.55 watt per meter square. So heat flow from both sides of the plate is given by now both sides mean we have to multiply by two, and then you already calculated h prime. And Ts you know surface temperature finally so total heat flow will be 770 watt. Now heat loss by the plate instantaneous is given by MCP density that is the total amount of heat loss because you have to calculate rate of cool cooling calculate the initial rate of, rate of cooling of the plate. So this is the amount of heat is going to be lost uh, lost by the plate. Now M is actually area thickness into rho. So we have already seen for the glass plate area is no thickness you know and density is no right. So that is mass is 7.5 kg. So mass 7.5 kg. CP already given so. The rate of cooling is the delta T is calculated 0 0.155 degrees C per second. Okay, so just that the total amount of heat loss by the glass plate is actually equal, equalized with the MCP delta T, and then you from that equation you calculate the delta T. Okay, here is a typo is that it will be 0 0.698 because panel number has to be greater than 0 0.5. As you can see, it is 0 0.698. Here it will be 0 0.698, not 0 0.0698. Type it. okay. Make sure you correct it. You can check it through this expression. Now we're going to talk about. Uh, we talked about laminar flow. We're going to talk about uh, turbulent flow, and then we'll look at various uh, expressions. Uh, <coughs> turbulent flow actually happens uh, <coughs> in a boundary layer. The majority of the practical application, uh, it is turbulent flow happen as you can see that uh, this is the boundary layer. In which reaches the 99% of the fifteen velocity, and uh, turbulent flow, the rate of heat and momentum transfer, and the associated friction and heat transfer coefficients are several times larger than in laminar flow. Okay, since the nature of turbulent flow is complex, therefore it is difficult to solve the problem relating to turbulent flow analytically. So, we actually, heat transfer data is best calculated by laboratory experiment and other methods. Of study is the analogy between heat and momentum transfer. So we'll see that analogy between heat and momentum transfer to solve this expression. Uh, we have already seen this expression. So what happens actually, if you remember correctly, we initially discussed that turbulent flow follows power law equations. Huh? The velocity distribution in a turbulent boundary layer follows the u by u uh, y by delta to the power n, where n is actually 1 by 7 for n is number less than 10 to the power 7, but greater than 5 to the power 10 to the power 5. So that is the region for turbulent flow through a flat plate. That is the, the this Reynolds number is this, then it is actually turbulent flow happens. And it follows power law region. So u by u given by y by delta 1 by 7. This is known as 1 7 power law. Now, how to solve this equation? Actually, this expression cannot be solved. So Blasius suggested the following relation for discuss here first. And using this Blasius equations, uh, Blasius law, we're going to solve it. So we're going to use this expression. Tau zero is actually shear stress at the wall. Rho is the density, right? U is the velocity, delta is the boundary layer. Mu is the viscosity of the fluid. So we, in this formula, we're going to use this expression. And then we are going to derive val different value, like right? delta, tau zero, CFX. CFX is the skin friction coefficient, and this is average skin friction coefficient. So first, we are going to determine boundary layer thickness delta. So you are going to substitute the value of u by u, and uh, in Horkheimer integral equation. So this is actually the equation tau zero rho u square, and you can see u by u actually using uh, this expression. Okay, this is the expression. This is the Horkheimer integral equation. Don't need to remember all this. Actually, you see, finally they solve it, and then I think. All this expression, you don't need to look into this. Finally, they get this expression. And if you remember correctly, this is how you deal with when we talked about uh, turbulent flow uh, through a tube, right? If you remember correctly, in the fluid property, we discussed this expression. Delta by x divided by zero uh, equal to 0 0.371, they don't start to the power 1 by 5. But delta is the boundary layer, x is the distance from the surface or leading edge. So this expression you need to remember in order to solve the numerical. If you want, you can. Uh, go through this uh, derivation, but again, uh, derivation is not so important because the complex derivation, final expression is more important. Okay, then shear stress tau zero also that same expression, Blasius law, Blasius expression you can determine. So we have already determined delta, so substitute the value of delta from these previous slides. 
and then uh, you get tau zero is this expression, right? 0 0.0288 rho u squared minus to the power 1 by 10. Local skin friction coefficient or drag coefficient CFX. We have already seen tau zero is rho u squared by 2 into CFX, right? Now, uh, tau, tau zero is this expression. Rho u squared by 2, 0 0.0576 minus to the power 1 by 12. And also we have seen tau zero is given by CFX half rho u squared. That is already have seen, right? So these two can be equalized. So finally, CFX becomes 0 0.0573 divided by Reynolds power to the power. This is more important. This is more important. Okay, CFX, the equation for the CFX. This is where we're going to use this. Then average value of infection coefficients, so we're going to integrate over the whole length. So the CFX we have determined, then we finally get skin friction coefficient. Reynolds number 1 by 10, right? Or Reynolds number to the power minus 1 by 10. So this expression is more important. Now this is valid for this Reynolds number is within this range, but if it, Reynolds number is higher than 10 to the power 7 and between 10 to the power 7 and 10 to the power 9, the expression becomes 0 0.455 divided by log 10 Reynolds number 2.58. Okay. These two expressions are critical. So let's look into one numerical. I think uh, Derivation is not important. I am again saying you have to just look into the final expression and then we're going to derive numericals using those expressions. Let's look into this first example. A streamlined plane is 200 millimeter, 200 meter long with a typical cross section having a per 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 perimeter of 9 meter above the wheel. If the kinematic viscosity of air at the prevailing temperature is 1.5 into by minus 5 meter square per second and density given 1.24 kg per meter cube. Determine the surface drag or frictional drag of the train when running at 90 km per hour. Make allowance for the fact that boundary layer changes from laminar to turbulent on the train surface. Length of the train given, hmm, perimeter of the cross section of the train above the wheel given 9 meters. So the surface area will be length into perimeter that is 800 meters square. Kinematic viscosity of air given, density of air given, free stream velocity given 90 km per hour. So that will be 25 meter per second. Frictional drag, you have to first determine the Reynolds number that is UL by nu. You get a 3.333 10 to the power 8. So this is a turbulent boundary layer, right? 10 to the power 8. So you have to use this expression, right? 10 to the power 7 greater than 10 to the power 7. So this expression you have to use. Assuming that the average transition from laminar to turbulent flow occurs at Reynolds number greater than 5 10 to the power 5, the average coefficient of drag is given by this expression. So only thing is that you have to just put the value of Reynolds L and then solve for it. This becomes 0 0.0018. And approximate friction drag over the train surface is the total frictional drag force with CFS half rho A U squared that you already have seen, right? Half rho squared, right? Frictional drag times area, right? Half rho A U squared. So frictional drag you calculated, rho you know. Area you know, and if you actually total back force will be 1255.5 Newton. That is how you solve this. Okay. So, fictional, average fictional drag times the half row A u square. Right? So, now uh, the most important thing we are going to determine and Reynolds and Colbert analogy. And <coughs> we are going to see how it is important. Reynolds analogy uh, is the interrelationship between fluid friction and Newtonian's law of viscosity. So we know that tau zero is equal to mu by du dy, which is given by, and q is given minus k dt dy, right? So actually these two expression mu cp by k is one or k by mu is equal to cp. Huh. Pendle number is unity temperature. This is happen when pendle number become unity. So by combining this expression, you get q equal to minus cp a tau zero dt by du. We are just combining this expression and then separating the variable and by integrating with the proper boundary condition at the place surface u0 and t is ts at the outer edge of boundary u reaches free stream velocity and t is in infinity right so this again when the fluid boundary friction and the newton's law viscosity becomes equal so this is actually the new tau zero mu by dy is this is the relationship between the fluid viscosity and this is the conduction heat transfer loss right heat loss by conduction so what is happening that when that fluid friction, the frictional force and the Newtonian law of heat, heating or cooling becomes equal, then only this expression becomes true. So you integrate this expression, last one, this expression, 
you realize this term q by cpa tau zero cpa tau zero you take on the left hand side q du zero to u du and t is ts by t infinity so you, finally you get q by a ts minus t infinity tau zero cp by u now tau zero cp by u is given by h right that is the Nusselt number h so tau zero is become and tau zero already you know cfs by half rho u square right so you can substitute this value hx will be hx is this term right q by a t so hx will be cfx half rho u square into cp by u right because this is hx now tau zero is this obviously hx is tau zero cp by u so cp by u we have multiplied this side right so it's become cfx by 2 rho cpu right and hx by rho cpu is taken to the left side then it will cfx by 2 now hx by rho cp by u is actually standard number that we have already seen it represents the Nusselt number divided by the product of Reynolds number and Pendle number so so you can see standard number is cfx by 2 that is standard number is fictional coefficient of that coefficient divided by 2 this is known as the Reynolds analogy by using this interrelation we can infer heat transfer data from the shear stress measurement because Standard number related to the uh, shear test, whereas heat transfer coefficient related to uh, heat transfer, sorry, skin coefficient or drag coefficient related to the heat transfer. Rate. So that's why actually one is viscous flow due to the frictional effect, another is heat flow due to heat transfer effect actually interrelated. And that's using this Reynolds Colburn energy, we can determine each parameter. And that is why initially we said that standard number is, uh, sorry, frictional coefficient is very much important to determine the heat transfer coefficient. And standard number is also important to determine the fictional coefficients. So standard number is physical significance. I have already seen it's a heat flux of the fluid divided by heat flux capacity of the fluid. You can just write this. Now again, we can exp exp uh, expand this expression. Nusselt number you already know, hx x by k, which is given by this expression you already seen. Now divide by both sides by Reynolds number, Pandas number one by third. So it is become zero by three to Reynolds number half. Hmm. This is given by CFX by 2. Already have seen, right? The left hand side of the equation, equality can be written right? Nusselt number, Reynolds number, x by Pandel number, 1 by 3rd. By Nusselt number, Reynolds number, Pandel number, Pandel number, 2 third. That is Tantan number into Pandel number, 2 third. So CFX by 2 already given by Tantan number into Pandel number, 2 third, right? This is the heat and momentum transfer. So this is called Colburn analogy, right? Standard number times Pandel number equal to CFS by two. A Pandel number, the Reynolds and Colburn analogy are the same. The Pandel number if one, then Reynolds and Colburn analogies are the same. That is Reynolds uh, if Pandel number one, standard next, standard number becomes CFS by two. Let's look into one solve example. Air flows over a heated plate at a velocity of 50 meter per second. The local king friction coefficient at a point on a plane plate is given 0 0.004. Estimate the local heat transfer coefficient at this point. The following property data for the area given, density, viscosity, specific heat, and conductivity given. Use this standard number into Pandel number one third CFS by two. So all the parameter is given. First, you determine Pandel number mu CP by k is this much. Standard number is HX by rho CPU, this much. HX is unknown here, right? Now, you have to use this Colburn analogy, standard number times Pandel number 2 thirds CFS by 2. This is the expression, right? Colburn analogy. I think it will be typo here. It will be 2 thirds, okay, not 1 third because it is given here 2 thirds. Okay, check it. So, standard number is this, Pandel number already determined, and CFS already have determined, right? CFS have already determined. I think CFX is given. Yes, CFX is given. So HX is 116.9 watt per meter square kelvin. Let's look into other aspect. Uh, we have already determined that from Colburn analogy, Stanton number, Pandel number, two thirds, CFX by two. But CFX, I think already you determined in the previous slide 0 0.0576 times divided by Reynolds number to the power 1 by 5. So CFX, you can substitute here. 
So ultimately, it's become HS 0 0.0288 K by H, Reynolds number 4 by 5, Reynolds number 1 by 5. And then uh, for tabular flow, you can integrate over the whole area, whole length to get the average convective wind transfer position, just like previous cases. And so we integrate this expression. And finally, we get Nusselt number equal to 0 0.036 Reynolds number 2 to the power 4 by 5, Pandel number 1 by 2. This is happen heat transfer parameter for tabular flow using Colvin analogy. Let's look into one example. The crankcase of an IC engine measuring 80, cylinder, 80 centimeter times 20 centimeter may be idealized as a flat plate. The energy runs at 90 km per hour and the crankcase is cooled by the air flowing past it at the same speed. Calculate the heat loss from the crank surface maintained at 85C and that to the ambient air at 15C. Due to the road induced vibration, the boundary layer becomes turbulent from the leading edge itself. Very good. The crankcase IC engine, uh, average velocity of the <coughs> Air flow is given 90 km per hour, right? The engine runs at 90 km per hour, that is 25 meter per second. Surface temperature given 85 C, infinite temperature 15 C. Uh, length is given 80 cm, and weight is given 20 cm. So, property of the air at the average temperature, by average bulk temperature at 50 C is this much. Heat loss from the crankers given by Reynolds number UL by um, kinematic viscosity, that is 1.114 to 10 power 6. Since reverse number greater than 10 to the power 5 is a turbulent flow, we have to use this expression, last expression. Nacelle number is 0 0.033, Venus number to the power 0.8, Mandel number 0 0.336. You put the value and then you calculate average heat transfer coefficient is this much. The heat loss will be H prime A, Ds minus T infinity. This is the expression. So only thing you can see that expressions are different, right? Basic fundamental concepts are same for laminar flow, turbulent flow, through tube. Only the expression are different. So you have to first determine the Reynolds number and check whether it's a laminar region or tabular region. If it is in tabular region, you have to use this expression. If it is laminar region, we have already solved one example. You have to use the other expression. Okay. First and uh, I think last thing we are going to uh, uh, tabular tube flow. We're going to uh, we're going to discuss. <coughs> So first, I think we have to, for velocity distribution, I think already seen through a uh, turbulent tube flow is given by U by U max, Y by R is 1 by N, where U is the local average velocity, U max is the velocity, maximum velocity, R is the radius of the pipe, and Y is the distance from the wall, which is given by R minus R. The head loss already have determined during fluid flow is given by F, L, U prime square by 2G, right? Where F is the friction factor, U is the average velocity. Now, in case of turbulent flow through tube, it is difficult to derive simple analytical expression for heat transfer coefficient and Nusselt number. So we actually use friction factor for turbulent flow. Okay, and it is represented for different region of Reynolds number. You can see friction factor is different expression. Now, wall shear stress is given by tau w f by eight rho u max square. Right? This is also you know, right? Now, from Colburn analogy, you have seen that Pandel number is less than greater than zero point five, less than hundred. Tantan number into Pandel number 2 third given by F by 8. Now substituting the value of F from this expression because Reynolds number is within this region from 7.147. We can solve for <coughs> Nacelle number 0 0.023, Reynolds number to the power 0 0.8, Pandel number 1 third. Or you can say that uh, average heat transfer coefficient, convective heat transfer coefficient given by this expression. This expression only valid if Reynolds number is within 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 5. Pendle number between 0 0.5 and 100 and L by D greater than 0. Okay, this is traveling tube flow, but this is for a special case. We'll see this. A tube 5 meter long is maintained at 100 C by steam jacketing. A fluid flow through the tube at depth of 2940 kg per hour at 30 C. The diameter of the tube is 2 cm. Find out the average heat transfer position. The following properties of the fluids are given density, CP, kinetic viscosity, and thermal conductivity. First, you determine the average national number, and then we are going to use this expression, okay? Because Reynolds number between 10 to the power 1 and 10 to the power 5. So you check Reynolds number. So mass flow rate you determine first, and then velocity you determine from this. So Reynolds number is between 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power 5, right? Since Reynolds number greater than 2300, the expression holds. This expression you can use. So you use this expression and panel number also determines 72.3, so that is less than 100. So average heat transfer equation is to determine 
0.052.8 watt per meter square cube. Another example given in a state tube of 16 meter diameter, water is flowing at a velocity of 2 meter per second. The tube surface temperature maintained at 70 C and the flowing water is heated from the inlet temperature 15, 15 degrees C to an outer temperature 45 degrees C. Taking the physical properties of water by as its mean bulk temperature, calculate the following heat transfer coefficient from the tube surface to the water, the heat transferred, and the length of the tube. So, all the parameters are given. So, in order to determine the heat transfer coefficient, you first check the Reynolds number. It is 0 0.894 10 to the power 6. So, it is between 10 to the power 5 and 10 to the power 7. So, Reynolds number greater than 2500. So, the fluid is turbulent. And for the turbulent flow, Nusselt number is given by this expression. So remember, this is actually a determining turbulent tube flow. Okay, the tube flow always Reynolds number greater than 2500. So average heat transfer coefficient is determined by this expression. All the parameters you know, so that is keeping become 23959.6 watt per meter square. Cube. Total heat transfer will be MCP del T0 minus Ti. M is rho pi d square by velocity, right? Because all the mass is not given, so you calculate from the CP given. So for the fluid density given, uh, diameter of the tube is given, velocity is given, and then you can calculate total heat loss, 4230345 watt. The length of the tube is can be determined, determined from this expression because you have already determined the total amount of heat loss, heat transfer, average heat transfer question, you know, surface temperature, bulk temperature, you know, and area is pi dl, right? So actually you can, using this expression, you can determine the length of the tube, 23.4 meter. So these are the, uh, uh, him uh, problem given for homework this is two and then there are two more so these four expression uh, four numericals are given please uh, solve it uh, we're going to detail we're going to discuss in the next class that is uh, next uh, wednesday's class we're going to determine or discuss all this uh, solve example okay thank you